Hello, my friends. Today, I would like to show you my solution in India MO Problem Five. This is Red Peak. Don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like my video. The problem is the following: infinitely many equidistant lines are given in the plane. A positive integer n is called frameable if we are able to draw a regular polygon with n sides such that all vertices are lying on these lines. And moreover, no line contains more than one vertex. Then we want to show that first, 3, 4, and 6 are frameable. Second, any integer larger than 7 is not frameable. And finally, determine whether 5 is frameable or not. I really like this problem because it is the kind of problem that everyone can understand, but it has some nice theory behind it. So let me start by setting up some notations that I'm going to work with. Assume that the lines are parallel to the x-axis, and each of them has integer ordinate. This means the lines are given by the equation y equals to 0, y equals to 1, y equals to 2, and etc. Then I introduce a notion called unit polygon. A unit polygon is the regular polygon with center 0, and one vertex is the point 1, 0. Here is an example with n equals to 6. This gives us the unit hexagon. Here is another example with n equals to 4. This is the unit square. So starting from the unit polygon, we could perform rotation, scaling, and shifting. With these three operations, we are able to obtain any regular polygon in this plane. And this allows us to parameterize these polygons and to handle the problem. We are going to use complex numbers to denote the location of the vertices. For the unit polygon, the vertices are given by e to the power i times 2k pi over n. If we scale the polygon, we multiply the numbers by a positive scalar. If we rotate the polygon, we add an angle into the exponent. Note that because of the symmetry, it is enough to consider angles between 0 and 2 pi over n. Finally, if we shift the polygon, we simply add a constant to all the elements. To summarize, n is frameable if and only if there exists a shifting parameter z0, a scaling parameter r, and a rotation parameter theta, such that the imaginary part of the vertices are distinct integers. Now let's decompose z0 as x0 plus i times y0. Then the imaginary part of the vertices are given by y0 plus r times sine 2k pi over n plus theta. And n is frameable if these numbers are distinct integers. As you can see, we need to deal with these additional parameters y0, r, and theta. But what we really want to show is a property about the number n. So the idea is to eliminate these parameters one by one. First, we could remove the shifting parameter by taking a difference between the vertices. In particular, if we take the point k equals to 1 and the point k equals to n minus 1, they provide different integers. This means r times sine 2 pi over n plus theta minus r times sine minus 2 pi over n plus theta is a non-zero integer. Now we could do the same thing with the point k equals to 2 and the point k equals to n minus 2. And this implies that 
r times sine 4 pi over m plus theta minus r times sine minus 4 pi over m plus theta is an integer. Now taking the ratio between these two quantities, we move the scaling parameter r. Next, we apply the trigonometric identity sine alpha minus sine beta equals to 2 sine alpha minus beta over 2 cosine alpha plus beta over 2. Applying it to the numerator gives us 2 sine 4 pi over n cosine theta. And applying it to the denominator gives us 2 sine 2 pi over n cosine theta. Therefore, Taking the ratio also remove the dependency on theta, and what it remains is sine 4 pi over n over sine 2 pi over n, and this is just 2 times cosine 2 pi over n. To summarize, a necessary condition for n to be framable is that 2 cosine 2 pi over n is a rational number. Indeed, this could happen only if n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And this is called Leven's theorem. The proof of the theorem is based on the property of Chebyshev polynomial. We first saw the existence of a degree n modic polynomial Tn with integer coefficients such that Tn of 2 cosine theta equals 2 cosine n theta for any theta. This is due to the following trigonometric identity, which allows us to write down a recursion on Tn. More explicitly, we get Tn plus 1 equals x Tn minus Tn minus 1. Then we could easily prove by induction that Tn satisfies the condition and it is monic degree n and has integer coefficients. Therefore, Tn of 2 cosine 2 pi over n equals to 2. This means the number 2 cosine 2 pi over n is a rational root of Tn minus 2. And from the rational root theorem, since Tn is modic, all the rational roots are integers. On the other hand, we know that cosine lives between minus 1 and 1, so the only possibilities to make 2 times cosine something to be an integer is minus 1, minus half, 0, half, and 1. And these are exactly n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. As a conclusion, we have shown that n is not framable for any number different from 3, 4, and 6. Finally, let me finish by providing my construction for n equals to 3, 4, and 6. We start from the unit polygon for n equals to 3, we just need to scale it properly. For n equals to 4 and 6, we need to first perform a rotation, then scale it. You could visually check that all the vertices lie on different lines. I hope you enjoy the animation and the solution. See you next time. Bye.